Hello and welcome to part seven of how to play the bongos. Now, in this episode, I'm gonna talk about uh, using ghost notes as well as an exercise that is, I think would be helpful to incorporate some different types of ostinato patterns, or in other words, repeating patterns uh, that incorporates ghost notes, but helps them make uh, some different grooves a little funky, uh, kind of come alive to bring another layer to the rhythm. So one of the things that I do, and actually before I jump into that, I almost forgot, if you have been watching these videos and you have not subscribed, I would love for you to be part of the subscription family here on my YouTube channel. So yeah, hit that button right there, hit that bell notification so you'll be notified of future videos. Anyways, let's jump right back in, into it and get into this video. Now, one of the things that I often do when I'm playing bongos is emulate a lot of what happens on the drum set in this particular context. A lot of what I've been talking about in this series has been either with the martillo in the Latin context and, or a contemporary pop, like rock context. Okay, so in that context, on a drum set, I tend to take a lot of what happens on the hi-hat and incorporate that within the playing, especially if it's just me and a guitarist or even if I'm playing by myself, it helps add another layer to the groove. And now this isn't always a good fit. It just depends on the context, right? And that depends on your situation and, and then if you're beginning your growth as a musician and your setting, your setting, the context di dictates it. But when it's applicable, when it's relative, right? So what I mean is using ghost notes like what a hi-hat would be doing. So if the pattern is mm, mm, or boom, boom, got, boom, da, da, got with that bass and the snare, the kick and snare, then we might add some hi-hat, boom, right? So you have that... This adds something to the rhythm. Now, I can take those same types of patterns or ideas from the hi-hat or what a, what a hi-hat's doing and add them to the bongos. Now, it's not just a hi-hat that does this, but these are ideas that we hear in the, in the music. And so if we're talking about genre and context and we're playing the bongos in this context and we are playing a rhythm that is essentially playing a backbeat type of groove like this, well, I can add those ghost notes. Now, I've talked a lot about this with the cajon. So there's, if you go back and look at my cajon videos, you can see where I talk about ghost notes, ostinatos, and, and these fingertips, adding that. But anyways, so here is, I'm going to play a little bit, and I'm going to add some of these ghost notes, and then I'm going to show you an exercise that is actually like a groove that you can use to practice this. All right, so I didn't change a whole lot from what I was doing in the previous video, but the whole idea is this is the groove. That's the basis of the groove, that's the skeleton, in other words. The only thing different is that I did before from that and the, what I did before is the, the notes in between. The And when I say ghost notes, that's a relative term too because this, could be the ghost note. This could be the ghost note. But the idea is that the dynamic is really low, which I could go on and have talked about before, the importance of developing your ability to use dynamics in your playing. So this is going to be, I think, a good exercise for perhaps for you to incorporate. So what I'm doing, if this, this, that sounds one way, right? Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But if I want to add some more notes, make it funkier, um, which it does add a whole nother funky element, or just another level of playing and, and 
fill the spaces, if you will, then I can add those ghost notes. And all of these things in here do so much. It makes it sound like a completely different rhythm. But I'm basically doing the same thing as this. Or that is with the ghost notes added, I should say. So here is a groove that is like something you might hear on a hi-hat that you can use as an exercise to develop this. Now, the way you wanna practice this is with dynamics. That being said, practice all of your exercises, not just with different tempos and different notes, but also pay attention to your dynamics. So if we're practicing single notes and we're just right here, eighth notes, one and two and three and four, also practice them at the same tempo, louder, and then softer. Practice them gradually. And play with that, practice that with the metronome in a parameter so that you can also monitor your growth from it too as well. So here's, a, here's the, the pattern. Basically, you're gonna play two notes, left, right. Then you're gonna play another note and right after that, double on the other hand, and then do the same thing, and then start over. So let me play it a couple times and then explain it note for note. Pretty basic, right? What I'm doing is one, two, one, two, three, one. One two one two three one two three one two one two three one two three left right left right right left right right and repeat. You now you can switch it up, make variations. Left right left right right left right right left right. Added a left right, then. Left, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right, and repeat. So that's an additional grouping of two. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, repeat. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. So that sounds like this, looped over as a loop, a continuation. Okay, so you can practice that over and over using dynamics. Now I'm just playing with my fingertip right on the tip, but this is a great way to practice that. And you and practice it soft, very soft. So if this is, that's another thing, which is a whole nother lesson. How soft shall we go? Well, you wanna practice different dynamics. So set your dynamic level. If this is going to be what, let's say we're practicing eighth notes and we don't wanna be at full volume, find out where your full volume is before you're putting too much effort, not staying stiff now, but too loud, hurting your hands, you're practicing over for a while, we want good technique, but not playing too hard, but find out where your loudest, almost loudest, loud dynamic is, then go all the way down to where you're barely, touch, barely touching it. Then try to find somewhere in the middle and take that middle part and practice that for a whole minute. Then go down to where you're barely touching it. Practice that for a whole minute. F experiment with this. Write it down, what you did, and then build from there. So that's just one idea, basically the and Now, one thing I didn't mention is I'm using accents. Very important. So if I go, 
left, right, then I'm hitting an accent on the very next left. See that, right? And it becomes a groove all by itself. So into the groove from before and this exercise. So it becomes another thing for your arsenal. Now, don't know what I was getting ready to say next, but hey, thank you for watching. I hope this benefited in some ways. Practice with dynamics. Practice with ghost notes as well. And try this exercise out. See how you can incorporate it in your practice time. All right, that's all for now. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell notification. Have a smile upon you. God bless you, and I'll see you soon.